All right, guys, it is time. It is actually time to start the magical journey of Basilisk in the WTL code S. We had qualies, they went well. Now we've entered the big leagues. And this is our opening match of the season. Basilisk versus Abydos. Obviously, this is a regular season. You guys can just do exclamation mark B, exclamation mark bracket to see uh, the match order, etc., etc. This is honestly a match that absolutely 100% certain should have happened in the qualifiers. Not once, but twice. Somehow it didn't. Like, I don't know what Abydos was doing in the quali, but obviously we should have played against one another. I think the guys from WTL were a little bit upset about it, so they were like, F it, we'll do it live, we'll do it in Codas immediately. Uh, the matchups are Reiner versus Nightmare, Trigger versus SOS, the last match, and the middle match is Cero versus Cure. I'm pumped, I'm excited. I kind of want to check one more thing, but I can do it after this first game. I honestly think that uh, the drawing was actually quite solid for us. We play one match a week. So it's kind of important to get off to a good start, otherwise you sit here and you're molding for one week straight that the things didn't go exactly the way that you had it planned. Mm. Mm. They put Rainer's mentality down to 7. I kind of missed the whole uh, player chart thing. But I'm sure that I'll have plenty of time to analyze it and mold over it during the season. I think if Rainer does need another haircut. That is one thing I can say for certain. And Nightmare needs to tidy up a little bit, guys. Kind of feels like he's playing from his closet. But obviously that has never stopped anyone from being great at video games. One gate fast spent into Twilight Council. Obviously let me know about volume, by the way, guys. If it's too loud or too quiet. I think it should be kind of good. Uh, the rules of this are honestly kind of silly. I am not allowed to join the games. So we are just watching a stream and then I show the stream to you guys. Good thing about it is that there is no delay. Bad thing about it is that the observing is not as good as me. The audio doesn't quite feel great. And overall, I just don't love it. Pretty good at that movement so far. But it's the only way for me to watch the Basilisk boys go at it. So obviously we're going to watch. Very sexy at that movement by Nightmare. I am going to be... I feel like maybe the other stream is better. So they provide me with two links. This one honestly seems a little bit laggy. I don't like it, guys. I'm going to swap. I'm going to try the other one. This one is not working out that hot. Try this one. Hope this one is better. So they just give me two random uh, links and then I can click on them. I know you guys can see it at the moment. So we have Resonating Glaives into a Dark Shrine. Four Gateway Glaive followed up with a Prism and a Dark Shrine. As Reynor has lost a couple of links and two drones so far. That's honestly a pretty decent start for Nightmare. Reynor obviously has to know that he is normally the superior player here. That he's the favorite. If you are the favorite, most of the time you're going to play it rather safe. Can't imagine a world where Reynor is not going to build a single Spore Crawler. Like you don't necessarily build... Three spore crawlers, right? If you think it's going to be Roboglyphs. This stream also sucks, by the way, man. It's, uh, what is happening? Am I the only one who's struggling, guys? Or are the other casters struggling too? The quality of the stream is just terrible. I don't know which one is better. If it's uh, the YouTube one or the Twitch one. This is why it sucks so freaking hard for me to cast it. Come on, like how can I even get excited over Starcraft like this? I don't know what to do. So the Dark Temple has been wiped in. The Spore Crawler is 65-70% done. I think it will finish up in time. Obviously Reyna does not want to lose the Spore, does not want to lose Queens. In the end, one DT actually somehow gets caught in range with that Spore Crawler. That's a pretty sexy surround. Yeah, Reyna just takes no damage at all. Did Nightmare even get Resonating Glaives, guys? Because I was, like, rebooting streams and switching streams. I don't even know if he actually got Glaives or not. It's the same at Wadi stream. It's annoying, man. I feel like there has to be a better way to do this, but okay. It is what it is. Is 
This always happens at the start of a WTL season. Super frustrating. Especially because I feel like I always get spoiled because I can just join the games and I also like my own observing a whole lot more. And unlike almost every other caster, I actually think it's easier to cast when you do your own observing. Because then you can kind of build up, you can pace, you can hype up things. And when you're only watching, so whether you have a dedicated observer or you're watching uh, the game like this, kind of just, it's very hard, I think, to build up rhythm and flow. Now, of course, it is important for a lot of tournaments out there to have a dedicated observer because not every caster is a good observer. I find it harder. And then especially if the stream sucks, then I'm, now I'm having a very tough time getting excited over this. But the only thing that matters is that so far Rainer is not falling apart. He has not taken too much damage. Nightmare is going to follow the DT opening up with some the blinky boys. Blink is done. Rainer is sitting pretty at 66 drones. Has good link movement. There's one DT apparently hiding in the main base. And I like that Nightmare isn't just revealing it now. But he's going to reveal it once he reveals his army in the center of the map. When it gets close to creep. That's very good gameplay here by Nightmare. Rainer is definitely going to take a little bit of a beating. I don't think Rainer is in danger of dying. But we do need to start being very careful with Queens and Ravagers. These stalkers are in super deep by the way. Nightmare is YOLO as he blinks forward, gets on top of the Ravagers. Rainer is honestly not expecting that. So he was just going for the War Prism, trying to manage everything at once. I don't think he got the Prism. More Stalkers have been warped in. Rainer is actually in a bit of trouble here, guys. I don't like how this is going at all. Losing the Ravagers was not something that I think he was allowed to do. Very good Blink Stalker Micro on the side of Nightmare. That Prism is still sitting on the edge of creep. 12 Roaches with speed are in production. And if all of them come out at the same time, obviously Rainer is fine. But I don't know if he's going to be fine here as another Queen dies. Nightmare with another crazy blink on top of Roaches. I actually think that Nightmare is causing a little bit of an upset here. I am the home commentator. I am very biased in the manner. We're never going to hide the fact that we're biased. We're pulling the drones. Queens, Ravagers, drones. Rainer is a champion hanging in there. Actually stepped into his own corrosive ball there for a split second with Roaches. Obviously it is now 3 base against 3 base. And it's not like Nightmare has got tier upgrades. But it is not looking too hot. 11 drones dying, 11 roaches dying, 4 ravages dying, couple queens have gone down as well, another roach falls. Here come the stalkers of Nightmare as they will get on top of the spine crawler. The spine crawler falls too. Rainer's army is starting to get pretty big though. Especially on creep. I do think he's fine, and that was a fantastic fight for Rainer in the end. There is one DT slicing up a couple drones. Hey, my stream just got better. Awesome. Still okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's okay. Rainer is down 7 workers and he's a 3 base Zerg against the Protoss with Blink. There is no creep on the other side of the map and the Robo base in production. But that final fight can give us a little bit of hope that Rainer can maybe turn this around. Nobody can Liquid Loot, they just don't allow it. I think what they are afraid of is a bunch of casters all wanting to join and then casters start lagging. Like you guys see in the weekly tournaments and I guess they want to prevent that. And obviously a lot of games are played on the Asian server. If the European cast is joined, it could cause some lag. So I guess that is the reason. But obviously I think uh, it sucks. But if the stream works like it currently does, then I I can get over it. I'm not that upset. And at least we have player cams, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's good now. Well, just when I said that, it's lagging again. A couple of cross balls go down. Nightmare with another ambitious forward blink as the Adepts deny the fourth base, by the way, of Raynor. Off creep, Raynor's army is just not going to do very good unless Nightmare messes up. I think Raynor knows that, but he probably feels like he is forced. This is a rough start, guys. Bit of a false start. Raynor has been completely undefeated in the WTL Code A qualifiers for Basilisk. I think he ended up being 6-0 in the end. Yeah, struggling a little bit here. Not 100% over, but things look very bad for Raynor. There's no way around it. And Raynor also doesn't have an army that's really capable of like a great comeback, right? Like Roaches and Ravagers are not normally the units where like, Wow, maybe we can suddenly have a great fight. As, uh, as much as I hate the result, it is definitely going to spice things up. And it makes the entire best of seven a whole lot more exciting. Because, you know, I was very confident going into this. If Rainer falls 0-1 here, we're going to get a little bit less confident. 
But Rainer is a survivor. He's a battler. He's making us up to a hive. He's got a lurker down on the way. So maybe the Italian Stallion is able to drag this game on and on. And I do think if we ever make it into like minute 14, minute 15, I think I actually favor uh, Raynor. But Nightmare is a very aggro boy. He reminds me sometimes of Patience. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could have timed that any better, right guys? He reminds me sometimes of Patience. Bam, another forward blink surrounding the entire army. A sick Nova there as well. And we can see it in the player cam. Raynor at this point knows that the writing is on the wall. He is not going to make it up to Vipers. He is not going to make it up to Lurkers. Nightmare with, a, honestly, a bit of an upset here. A surprising start to the WTL season. It's going to take the 1-0 lead for Abydos. The team that did not manage to get into the upper bracket final of WTL Code A. They didn't make it into the grand final either. After they surprisingly lost to Starlight Twinkle. We'll take the one who lead over Basilisk gear. The WTL Code A champs. That is what we are. I mean, Raynor is still on a bit of hopium here. But obviously, this Protoss army is not going to get stopped. Raynor knows it. Gotta give credit where credit is due. And that was a very sexy game by Nightmare. Not the start that we were looking for when it comes to Basilisk and WTL. But it is all good. Long way to go. I am not too concerned. Kind of sad that I am not online on Team Liquid. That doesn't seem very fair. Fixed it now, but a little bit too late there. It's all good, though. It's only game one, guys. It is only game one. So the way that this works is that obviously it is a best of seven. And the first team that gets to four points obviously wins the clan war. But I do think all matches will always be played out regardless. Reyna claims the first loss for Basilisk and Kodas. Saro needs the 2-0 then? No, I believe in all three players, guys. People are really underrating Trigger. Trigger is actually very good. People who think that Basilisk is a two-player team are very silly. I feel like SOS is a wild card. Yeah, I think every match has potential to be close. Because we cannot pretend that Cure has never defeated the likes of Saro and Raynor. We know that he did. Uh, Trigger is from Canada. We've got a Finnish man, an Italian man, and a Canadian man. Basilisk needs a Terran. Why do we need a Terran? I don't think that's uh, really how it works. What would you rather have, guys? A top 10 Terran, a top 10 Protoss, and a top 10 Zerg? Or would you rather have the three best Zergs in the world? It would make more sense to just have the three best Zergs in the world. There is really no need for needing X, Y, or Z. What we need is good preparation, good team spirit, and the players to display their best. And whether all of them are Protoss, Zerg, or Terran, it really does not matter. Mm -hmm. In the bottom right side, guys, of Dragon Skills, we're looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion. It's probably fuming a little. This is Basilisk uh, Rainer. Uh, my stream is just dying. Cool. Awesome. Should get the Muslim to join. You think uh, an Age of Empires player is going to carry us in WTL, mate? I'm sorry about these lag, thing, uh, lag spikes, guys, in the choppy stream. There's literally nothing I can do about it. In the top left side of Abbey or of, uh, Dragon Skills, we are looking at the main base of the man who's taking a surprising 1-0 lead for Abydos. It is Nightmare. Obviously, now, guys, things get a little more tense, right? I didn't want to get too carried away and be like overly almost fake hype in case it's going to be like a 4-0 or a 6-0. But yeah, it's safe to say that we're going to have to work for it. Like if you just look at RWTL Code A performance and their Code A performance, it's not weird that a lot of people considered us the overwhelming favorite. But obviously it is a strong team. Nightmare is good. Cure is good. SOS is good. But I still have a lot of confidence. Watching the Muslim vs. Pig recently taught me to never count the bald man out. Yeah, Benny is uh, Benny is still very good at Starcraft, but he is afraid because I have challenged him to play me in the Basilisk Big Brain Bouts on the 28th of April. Uh, so basically this Friday we can do Big Brain Bouts because of the Gamers Without Borders tournament. But the following Friday I was like it would be awesome if we can get a cast to Battle Royale. So I thought of Cats vs. Pig. 
Uh, maybe Zombie Grub versus Wadi or Zombie Grub versus Steadfast. Uh, we can also do some 2v2, maybe Fear Dragon, Biomorph, the rematch, and then the Muslim versus Roddy. But Ben is afraid. You think Trigger have a chance with SOS? I think he's the favorite. <laughs> I don't think he has a chance, I think he's the favorite. People are really underestimating Trigger and really overrating anyone that is Korean just because they are Korean. You don't win games, guys, by uh, being born in a certain country. That's not how it works. It's a good thing. Otherwise, I would have been very sad about being born in the Netherlands. <laughs> I doubt that Trigger vs. S was a really macro game. When two worlds collide, mate, it could very well turn into a macro game. You know, one base versus one base doesn't often end things. Then we'll kind of be like, all right, I'm forced to expand, you're forced to expand. Now we're two base, two base. Now we're three base, three base. So. What did you think about the power ranking post in the TL net? So I didn't actually properly read the description of every single team, but I liked it. Um, they put us at number one, which obviously is awesome. It's flattering, but it doesn't mean anything. We can put ourselves at number one. The entire world can put us at number one. In the end, we have to show up and deliver, of course. But I, uh, I agreed with the majority of the article that I read. Hmm. Yeah, of course, historically, SOS is like one of the most accomplished players of all time. Not just one of the best protesters, but legit one of the most accomplished players of all time. Uh, but yeah, none of that matters. The doors are wide open here, so Rainer is just gonna walk in. How on earth is that possible, guys? Three minutes and 52 seconds. There is no unit in the wall, and I think that Rainer is probably chuckling a little bit that this even happened. Four probes falling. I have no idea what that just was. Like, Nightmare has a couple of very strong games, like that previous game he just had on Royal Blood. This was a big mistake. Obviously, fantastic for Rainer. After the Dark Shrine got scouted, Nightmare cancels the Dark Shrine. Now follows it up with a robo, but I I told you guys a little bit while I was laddering. Protoss economies early on, I feel like are incredibly vulnerable, more vulnerable than of any other race. And losing four or five probes and mining time in a phase in the game where you're supposed to lose nothing is a straight up nightmare. No pun intended. Now, always going Dark Shrine is not necessarily a bad thing because in the old days, people made DTs with the idea of like, I'm going to make the invisible guy and I'm going to win the game, right? Like, rally them into the natural, into the main base and just close your eyes and hope that they kill your opponent. But DTs are just excellent units when it comes to map control, when it comes to scouting, when it comes to being uh, safe and sound defensively. So even if you're a guy who pretty much always goes Dark Shrine, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. But of course... Every pro player wants to switch it up a little bit. Uh, Dark Shrines are not the same investment as they once upon a time were. Raynor off to a much better start. I am very annoyed, by the way, that Raynor is on the top side of the scoreboard and Nightmare is on the bottom side of the scoreboard, even though Nightmare is the one who spawned on the top side of the map. I have no idea how these guys think this is acceptable. It's driving me fucking insane. What happened in game one? Nightmare, honestly, just played really good. Wasn't like one lucky thing that totally went his way. This is that he was very aggressive with the Stalkers. I think he was a lot more aggressive than Raynor anticipated him to be. And then at one point, Raynor exposed his Ravages while he used the Queens to chase the War Prism. He didn't get the War Prism, lost the Ravages, and was behind ever since. And Nightmare just didn't make any mistakes in the follow up. Well, they know it, uh, Ferru Siru. I'm sure that they know it. It's just that they are probably just like, blue should always be at the top and red should always be at the bottom for whatever crazy-ass reason. Yeah, it's terrible. This makes for a horrible uh, viewing experience. But that's okay. Back to the game. Raynor is making a couple of ravages in the center of the map. Could catch these adapts, and that's obviously lovely. I mean, these adapts have not really accomplished a whole lot in this game. Barely any workers went down. There is a disruptor on the way. Obviously, Novas are terrifying. 
gonna be a little bit harder for uh, Raynor to avoid Novas. It's too disruptive and an immortal. That's actually a shit ton of robo units in a seven minute game. A little bit surprised by that. As a couple of corrosive bells go down, the floodgates are open once more. Nightmare really needs to learn how to put a unit on hold position. This is just uh He's making life a whole lot harder than it's supposed to be. These are, I would almost say, unforced errors, because it's not like Raynor is doing a whole lot to make this happen. It's just Nightmare is letting it happen. Armies are flirting with each other in the center of the map. It's very important for uh, Nightmare that he doesn't randomly lose a Disruptor. I gotta say, he dealt with the Ling run by nicely, don't get me wrong. He didn't lose a lot of props. Uh, so the high, it is high level defense. But it's defense that wasn't necessary if he just has a unit in position. Raynor does not have like an infestation pit and a hive on the way. Ooh, just like he did again. Showtime, guys, in the Games Without Borders tournament. Raynor split off two Zerklings in the main base, morphed them into Banelings, and he's gonna rally them into the natural. And that is minus eight probes if I've ever seen minus eight probes, baby. And no, my stream is not ahead of yours. I just know these things. That's why they call me Mystic Mac. Couple of crossbow balls do not quite connect. This is still a bit scary, I gotta say. For a game where I felt a lot of things went well for Raynor, this is honestly one of these games where a little bit of Protoss magic is absolutely possible. This is not a guaranteed win at all. There's a couple of adept shade up in that six o'clock base. Very well done by Nightmare. Honestly, one or two fantastic Novas is all that our Korean Protoss needs to take a very surprising 2-0 uh, victory. And I'm definitely a little bit concerned. Like, I feel Reyna has this game. Reyna deserves to win this game. He's done a lot of things right, but one or two Novas. And honestly, it's anybody's game as a Corrosive takes out the Observer. Very well done. That is a Nova with a lot of potential. But Reyna with some very sexy micro. As the Banings are basically behind the stalkers at this point. They could very well go for the Disruptors. I really wouldn't hate it. Reyna does not go for the Disruptors. He's just splitting for days. And Lings and Banes in the end are going to be good enough. There are still Adepts, by the way. Killing drones at the bottom side of the map. They are playing without Game Heart? No, right? No. It's only two drones going down right now. Raynor has successfully defended, and obviously since Nightmare was only on three bases and didn't transition, this should pretty much always be good enough. Gets five drone kills. Sure, lovely, but losing two or three disruptors, losing a bunch of your stalkers while you're three base protos, not ideal. Raynor is also not quite as rich though as uh, maybe we would expect Raynor to be. Maybe it is because he's been losing those drones. Does Nightmare have a bunch of cannons? Ooh, this could be scary! Rain is paying attention. Sweet baby Jesus. Rain is gonna try to go cuckoo, I think, on this one, but it doesn't quite work. And Nightmare with the sick pickup as well. So Rainer ends up eating a pretty big Nova to their face and does not get a single kill. Now the Banings have been split off, but there's a lot of stalkers on the left side and a phenomenal overcharge. Great stalker positioning as well. In the end, a couple of Banings do sneak through, and these Banings will kill nine additional probes. Eight at first, nine in the end. There you go. You guys doubted me, but never doubt me. But I do think now it is going to be good enough, guys. A couple of extra stocks get warped in while the Rico also gets activated. I mean, Nightmare really is uh, making the best of very few units, but it is a numbers game. Rain or his Zerklings have plus one. Unfortunately, guys, we are about to tie things up. Rainer is happy. You can see him relaxing a little bit in his chair. He's like, mm, okay. We have done it as he does eat one more Nova to the face and now he's slightly more serious. He's shaking his head a little. I'm not exactly sure why. He's laughing. I think Rainer is like, man, this guy is coping at this point. This game is over. Why is he still in? Rainer doesn't like it when Protoss players say in games longer than they are supposed to. GG gets called, guys. And we are all tied up here between Basilisk and Abydos after two games. The best of seven that should have happened in Code A. Not once, but twice. Somehow it never happened. Instead, it is happening here in the opening week of the WTL Code S. Reina Nightmare 1-1 as we are getting ready for a set 2. I'm going to go ahead and take a very tiny break. Because I was leathering, guys, I indeed did not run ads. And that is a problem. We only need to run one set of ads per hour. But obviously, it is important I do that. Yeah, I didn't do that. I fucked up. I'll be right back, guys. Give me a tiny second. Sarah versus Cure is coming up. I'll see you guys soon.
<laughs> so the reason I'm not playing is because we had more confidence in the other three. Hello, Andre. Good morning, mate. Good afternoon, rather. If we are tied, guys, after the three best of twos, there's always a chance Roddy comes out. Sarah was at 94. Pure is at 78. I don't know what that means, but... I feel like Cure deserves a little more love than 78, doesn't he? Isn't he like kind of good at this video game? Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I'm with you, uh, X Blue Cyclone. 78 is something I would give Cuckoo, you know. Good, young, ambitious, talented, but obviously not close to Saro. Saro's strategy is quite low. I don't even really know what I'm looking at. Cure should be at least 82. I'd probably put Cure... Like, if Sarah was a 94, I think Cure is like 86 or something. 86, 88, no? He's very good. Like, he's a freaking GSO code as champion who often actually gets the best of the likes of Clem, Saro, and Raynor. Feels a little disrespectful to me, but... <laughs> what do I know, guys? Yona looks very handsome in his Basilisk goodie. Could it be win percentage? Hmm. I don't think so. I think it is honestly uh, just a skill rating. What do you mean Cure? Cure doesn't need a haircut. Look at his hair. His hair is marvelous. So is Serral's hair. Reyna does need a haircut. Hmm. I wouldn't quite say that he drops to B tier, but sure. You can say that here maybe is a tiny bit inconsistent, but I think it's more, I think he's somewhat consistent. It's more that he peaks sometimes, right? And you obviously can't put like his absolute peak as, okay, that is his level, but I don't think he like ever truly drops the ball where he suddenly becomes horrible. Uh oh, Roddy said Jonah is not 100. Jeremy and Slowly are coming for you. I didn't actually say he's not 100. I said, if Saro is a 94, according to this graph, then I feel the cure should be like 86 or 88. This said in Saro's Discord, it should have been all tense. Saro's been playing good lately. Literally lost one series, guys, ever since I am Katowice. And that was a best of seven against Clem, where he lost 4 to 3. And it's the only series he lost. Since he lost that best of five against Ragnarok. The man is on a mission. He's on a roll. How long will we wait for the next game? That is not up to me. I wish that I was in charge of at least something here, mate. My only power is to open a link and talk to you guys. Watch the games together and talk to you guys about what is happening. In the top left side of Dragon Skills, we are looking at the main base of the man who's going to try to put us in the lead for the first time. It is the great Jonas Atala. Basilisk Saro. Bottom right side, we're looking at the main base of the Korean Terran, who's honestly done a bit dirty by uh, these guys from the WTL. Because they are rating him at 78, and it is Cure, a GSL code as champion. I'm glad that we are good to go. I'm, I'm a bit nervous. I have to go to the restroom, even though I don't have to go to the restroom. You guys know that feeling? That's when you know that you're feeling it. It would have probably felt very different if Rainer would have just 2 out, but... Obviously in WTL code S, there are going to be very, very few, like, guaranteed victories. You're gonna have to work for it, you're gonna have to show up, and... You're gonna have to be prepared. And I don't think, like, Rainer played bad or anything, it's just... Nightmare got the best of him. These things happen. Yeah, I am... I'm definitely excited. Because so far, we've had a flawless record, right? We went 5-1, 6-0, 5-1, 6 in WTL Code A. So, we've been close to perfect. Or was it 5-1 in that final uh, Code A? I don't know. I think we had two 6 0s and two 5 and ones Is Bastardus getting a Terran player soon? I don't think that's on the agenda. I also don't think it's necessary. Because the maps in general are pretty fair. And on top of that, it is random seeding. Like, you could make a case for needing a Terran 
a lot more if the format would have been like all right the maps for this week are babylon dragon skills and ancient see three players on it if that's the case then you could be like it would be really nice to have a terran right to be able to uh, save the zergs but that's not how it works all the the only way that it works is that they say hey give me player number one number two number three in the dark we don't know anything else wouldn't it be nice for a team to have all the races though? But why exactly? If you can give me one very good reason on why that would be nice, I can answer that question. But I don't think it technically matters. Yeah, if we're playing 2v2 or 3v3, sure. But in one v in a 1v1 league with w only 1v1s, I don't see why it matters. Like, I would much rather have a team that consists of Dark, Rogue, Saro, and Raynor, then have a team with a top 10 Terran, top 10 Protoss, and a top 10 Zerg. How about practicing? Pros practice with everyone. They are not exclusive to teammates practice at all. Like, in every other team as well, there is a 0% chance that guys only practice with other players on the team. That's just not a thing. They practice with everyone. Because it's cool. That is something, yes. But obviously that doesn't mean that it's needed, right? Being cool is not a, a mandatory requirement to win a league. But you never know. Maybe in the future. But I think right now Basilisk is very happy with the roster that they have. I am very happy with the roster that we have. And we'll see where, uh, where it takes us, but... I generally believe that Serral, Raynor, Trigger, and Roddy can win WTL Codas. And I think we're going to try to do that with this roster. Cure is going for the most uh, standard build in the TVZ arsenal, if you ask me. A couple of Hellions and Cloak Banshees, Triple CC. It really does not get any more standard than this. I feel like this is the build that a lot of Terran players do if they feel like they are the favorite. Like Gabe has done this build like 5 million times against Zergs like Bly and let's say Namshar, Hate Me, etc. Where Hero Marine is the favorite. This is a very solid and safe build. Uh, I'm surprised that Cure is going for this build even if it's such a standard one. I would have expected Cure to play something that maybe is a bit more ambitious. A little more hit or miss but... Maybe he's just really feeling incredibly confident in his TVZ. You think D DKZ is better than Basilis though? Dark Hero Oliveira? Obviously you are entitled to your opinion, mate. Everybody is allowed to have their opinion. The beautiful thing about opinions though is that they're often wrong. And I for one disagree with you, but... That doesn't mean anything, right? We'll see when they actually play against each other. And we'll see who gets further in the playoffs. Cure activates Cloak very, very early on the Banshees. I do like that, but Saro has pretty unreal game sense. And even if they don't show up on his minimap, he will often see them rather quickly. Don't think he has really seen them yet. Saro is about to get the heads up. The two Cloak Banshees have snuck into his main base. Cure gets a couple hits off. Pretty good uh, Queen Micro so far. Any info on when the fourth race is coming out? Put uh, Stormgate on your Steam wish list, and then I think there's a good chance you see a fourth race. Having great English is not a uh, necessity. <laughs> never say never about anything, guys. I don't think that anybody would have ever predicted that Roddy would have been on a potentially WTL code as a winning team in the year 2023, but here we are. So if that's possible, I think almost anything is possible in StarCraft 2. Bonnie is amazing, yes. I know that uh, the management of Basilisk has spoken with a lot of pro gamers. Not just the guys that are currently on the team, but they've had plenty of calls with other guys too. 
But obviously, uh, this is not Pokemon. We're not trying to catch all the pro gamers. I much rather see a small team, but everybody being close, supporting one another, being involved in each other's progress, than one of these organizations that has 20 people on the roster. I just think that's silly. I think yeah, when it comes to putting stock of two players on a team, less is more. Tanks are going to siege up on the left side of the rocks. Now, Sarah could have potentially been working on these rocks, guys. That is a rock tower. This is not something that a lot of people know in Dragon Skills because you just don't see it come into play very often. The positioning here of Q is kind of good. He did lose five SCVs on the other side of the map to a Baneling run by. I don't think Sarah is like ultra concerned about running into this as quickly as possible. But obviously, it is uncomfortable as one queen falls. The second queen falls. That is not pretty. Saro is going to run into it. He needs Banelings to connect with either the Marines or the Hellbats. Oh, I don't know if this is quite the dream fight so far. But in the end, Saro will get the cleanup. The Rock Tower collapsed, by the way. Cure picked up 16 Marines. He's going to fly them into the main base as Hive is on the way. On the minimap, we can see that Cure picked up two more Metavacs. And he's flying towards the top right side. I am starting to get a tiny bit concerned here, guys. Like... I'm not saying that it looks bad for Saro, but this is where things can snowball, especially if you start losing queens. Saro is down 30 army supply. We have Banelings on creep, and I'm going to try to connect. Cure is playing very good. I think that it's going to be very hard for Saro to keep this base alive, or at least keep the drones safe. The good news is there are no drones to uh, be kept safe, but this hatchery is going to take a lot of damage, and I do think this hatchery will fall. It's great army movement by Cure. i got to give it to him. I am biased, guys. I am not the official caster of the WTL. I am just a Basilisk fanboy and captain. But I will obviously always give love to the players that deserve players, even if they do well against our boys. And so far, Q is playing very good. It is a good Terran map, make no mistake. Sarah could be in a bit of trouble here. Still uh, at least a decent amount of creep to work with as Cure has picked up tanks once more. This time around he's going to try to set up the triple tank on the left side of the rock tower. And the tank's target fire on the banelings is absolutely perfect. Can Yona his banelings make it through the cracks and connect with the marines? Somehow the answer is yes. Whew. I'm surprised and relieved that that went as well as it did. Because that could have honestly been very problematic. Oh. My captain armband is hidden. It's underneath my t-shirt. But it's here. I am the captain. Hive tech is done. Adrenal Glens is on the way and a Viper is in production. Let's do extra barracks go down in the main base for cure. What is that other building, guys? Oh, there's a barracks. It's weird. He was already building all three, but the production tab showed two. This rock tower being down here is actually just not helping out Saro at all. This just makes it a bit easier for these marines to kind of hold their ground, stand their line, and pick off banelings one by one. I am worried. Cure is up in supply and he's playing a beautiful TVZ so far. I'd love to see the queen count if I could. The banshees are still alive from the early game. Now one of the banshees is battling a queen. And I think Sarah can be very fortunate that it wasn't both of the Banshees attacking that Queen at the same time. Otherwise we would have lost another Queen here. Scan goes down and Cure is going to find a couple of these creep tumors as Lings and Banes are going to try to crash into this Marine army. Cure is all over it though, picks it up. We have made it up to Hive. We've got a Hydra then on the way. I think we're going to drop the Lurker then pretty much immediately. Because I have the feeling there is not much gain here in uh, just playing Ling Bane Hydra. Love that Parasitic Bomb. Cure not paying attention. It's double Parasitic Bomb, baby. That's dealing a lot of damage to some of these Metavacs. Enough to see it. Maybe an Abduct would have been decent too. But obviously we didn't have that much anti-air. <laughs> Just a couple of banelings by itself will connect. This is a very marine heavy army. It's literally pure marine medevac. A lot of micro potential, but... Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick up here Cure. Cure is trying to go full liquid clump. Snipes a couple of banelings. Saro is doing a good job in keeping an eye on these medevacs in the bottom left side. And Saro is gonna try his luck for the first time in a while offensively, but... There's 
nothing to uh, be gained here. Close game. Parasitic Bomb goes down on the full HP, Banshee. I feel like that kind of means that... Okay. <laughs> we dropped another para bomb. So one Banshee did die to, uh, to the second Parasitic Bomb. The first one did barely survive. Four Dropper Lords, guys. That's kind of interesting. Four Dropper Lords and a Nidus going up at the same time. I'm not exactly sure where Yona is going to take this. Maybe a proper Zerg invasion into the main base. He's going to drop 32 Zerglings with plus 2 melee and Adreno Glance into the main base. And I think he's going to try to reinforce that drop with a Nidus. It's pretty cool Zerg play. When the Zerg becomes the Terran, guys, that is basically what we are looking at right now. Cure is going to drop another Sensor Tower in his main base, but that Sensor Tower will not be done in time to give him the heads up. We're going to have to drop a Nidus immediately if we want to make sure that this will succeed. Cure is paying attention to it, though. He has picked up a lot of units. He knows that it's a lot of Zerglings. He knows now that it's a Nidus going up in the main base as well. But look at the minimap. Serral's army is going to try to pounce on this planetary fortress in the center of the map. Cure did leave a lot of units behind. Honestly, a pretty sick ZVT here between these two. Beautiful spread there by Cure. Cero does get the base, and that's obviously the most important. Got 20 SCVs as well for his efforts. Not a wow, he's got 114 Zerglings in production, guys. Excusez-moi. Perkela. That's a lot of Zerglings. 114 Zerglings on the production tab. It's been a little while since I've seen that. <laughs> Lurker then finishing up now as well. Cero still has money in the bank. He's done such a good job. Despite the fact that he's been under a decent amount of pressure throughout the entirety of this game. And was forced to trade out a lot of units to get a pretty insane economy. And he's now even going to try to take the bottom left side. At that point, I think it's becoming a little bit disrespectful, guys. And he's taking the other base on the right side as well. Look at the minimap. Cero has now taken basically every single base that he could ever get his hands on. Besides the planetary that he just blew up. He's taking the base above Cure's main and he's taking the bottom left side too. I have a hard time believing that we can ever get these bases up and running, but... I love a boy with ambition. As I often tell you guys. Zero seems like he really wants to take out a sensor tower. Was hoping that maybe the tank friendly fire would get the job done. This time around it's a fake drop, guys. Fake drop into the main base. I kind of like it. Hoping that Cure sends a few too many units to deal with it. While going with his main army in the center of the map. 200 IQ. Big brain gaming by Serral. That's what we want to see. This should allow the Bayonets to get slightly better connections here. But that is a fortified Terran setup if I've ever seen one. Saros is dropping Nidus networks all over the place now. That could obviously help him in making uh, it a bit easier to defend some of these very difficult bases to defend. Mass Recall, the Zerg version of it. But by no means, guys, do I think this game is over. Obviously, Cure has a very strong defensive setup. He's got tanks, he's got liberators, he's getting a bunch of uh, girls. That's very cute. Using the Nidus to get 16 drones out of it. But Cure is going to punish him for it almost immediately. At the same time, though, Sarah was once more going to try his luck in the center of the map. Gets a lot of the tanks. Gets the Liberator with an Abduct. Does not get any of the goals, though. I'm worried, guys. Are you guys worried? Why do I feel like Cure is winning this game? Like, Sarah only has a thousand gas in the bank. And I just don't think that is necessarily enough to keep going like this. Cure finds uh, the drones in the bottom left side as well. There is a Nidus that the drones could evacuate to. to potentially keep them safe for a little while. There's a couple of banelings to protect the drones too. I know Cure is only on 4.5 bases. And Saro is on all the bases. But 
Cure is heading into just a monstrous army. He's got 129 army supply at the moment. I don't know what our ghost count is at, but I think it's at like 10 or so, right? I'm honestly a bit uh, concerned here for Sarah. I'm not saying that I think Cure is like winning by per definition. But I think this game is a whole lot closer than what the minimap would suggest. Look at all the SCVs there, guys. Banelings could have connected and did kind of connect. I'm so sad that Sarah didn't split off two or three banes to the left side there. Because I think Sarah would have been able to get the SCV jackpot. Cure is not starving anytime soon. Donating a couple of marines and a single medevac in the top right side. But in return gets 11 drones and a queen. And a couple zerglings. Honestly that was a good drop for Cure. I don't think Cure is really on the, the verge of starving. Obviously he does need to get his hands on this space right. That is very important. Sarah is going to go for it once more. Drops the blinding cloud. He's going to try to get a couple of the tanks. I think the hellbats with blue flame are very smart. Obviously, this is all very expensive for Sarah. If he gets the orbital, I would have loved it. He doesn't get the orbital. Sarah's economy is insane. It is absolutely insane. Feeling a bit better about it now. Like, the first three bases for Cure are obviously pretty much dried up. But Cure does still have that base at uh, 6 o'clock. And uh, this center base is mandatory. If Cure ever loses control of the center base for more than a minute, obviously the game is over immediately. Right now, not game over. It's still close. Terran players can win these games. Terran has done a, a good job, obviously, in making sure that he is not that broke anymore. Viper is getting an abduct on a single tank. The drones, I'm going to try to fight 3-3 three, three bio. I think it's a little bit ambitious. Pretty high level video gaming between these two. Can settle, put us in the 2-1 lead here. He's got money for days. He even has a Neuro Parasite. So he takes control of one of the tanks. Off Cure, can a couple of these paintings connect with something juicy? The answer is no. Obviously, like, if you look at the bank, you look at the supply, you're like, yay! If you are on Team Basilisk and if you are on Team Cerobot. It's still 103 army supply of the Terran. And it's tanks, hellbats, and a whole bunch of ghosts. The good news is that the tanks don't have crazy upgrades, right? So I kind of like that for us. Yeah. I feel like Saro is one good fight away from indeed closing this game out. And perhaps this is going to be that good fight as we drop a blinding cloud. And every single tank that Cure loses here hurts. And he is going to lose a couple of tanks. More than just a couple. Cure loses pretty much every single tank. Okay. Now I want to say that... Uh, it is pretty much a wrap. Sarah with just a monstrous Zerg swarmy style. Taking control of the entire map and throwing wave after wave at Cure. Is eventually able to kind of break him. Cure is now indeed truly running out of money. Awful zoom out. I am not in control. Uh, my hands are clean mate. My hands are clean. I am not in control of the zooms. I am not in control of the observing. Definitely not in control of the player scoreboard in the bottom side. Even though this time around it is correct. I think one more wave will do it guys. And let's see if this is the wave for the great Iona Sitala. The man who's been absolutely red hot ever since IEM Katowice. He just doesn't lose at the moment. And it seems like he's not losing here on Dragon Skills either against Cure. The man who honestly deserves a higher rating than the WTO guys gave him. Saro gets 8 SCVs, does not quite get the Orbital and maybe does not quite land the finishing blow just yet. Do the Ghosts even have personal cloakings by the way? Control Shift X, Legoland. Control Shift X. I really like the Nidus networks and the drones hopping in and out. It's very cool. I don't want to say we've never seen that before, but most of the time you see it like one time in a game and then somebody stops using it, but... Sarah has been like consistently doing it to save drones and saturate bases. That's honestly pretty fucking cool. Thank you, Alberto Tunzi. Here we go once more. Links, Banes, Hydras for the great Yona Satala. Abidos took a 1 0 lead as the Raynor surprisingly dropped game 1 against Nightmare, who just played very well in that game. But Raynor managed to tie things up, and Sarah will put us in the lead. 
for the first time this season in WL. Kodas, we are leading, guys. Two to one. Woohoo. Believe. Ted Lasso. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Legoland, for the 12 months. Very solid game by Serral. I don't think it was easy. I actually thought that Cure got himself in a pretty playable spot a couple of times. You want the game 7 for Ruddy to finish it? There is a chance, mate. What if you are the ace, Audrey? Ruddy? I am probably the ace. But, like, I cannot 100% guarantee that I'm the ace, guys. Because I don't want to help Abydos, right? We don't want them to know that I am going to be the ace. But, between you guys and me... It is very likely that I'm the ace. We will trigger beat SOS. We're about to find out, right? But first, we're going to go ahead and enjoy game two between Cero and Cure. I'm sorry that I didn't run a prediction, by the way, guys, for that Rainer versus uh, Nightmare series. I wasn't quite certain about the flow of things, and I was molding because my ladder games went terrible. I'm a passionate nerd. What can I say? It will never go away. Will there be a game 7 even if you win like 4-1? Well, 4-1 is not an option because 6 games will always be played. So there is obviously no game 7 if we win 4-2 or 5-1. Uh, but if it is 3-3, then there will be an ace match. So, when it comes to this octagon, right? Explain it to me, guys. Gray is both of them. Purple is... Like, how does it work? Which color belongs to who? <laughs> Bottom right side, guys. Taking the 1-0 lead in his little best of two. And taking the 2-1 lead for us. Basilisk. Zero. Top left side. We're looking at the main base of our Korean Terran player. He is down 0-1 in his personal best of two. It is Cure. Gray both. Purple, Cure. Zero's blue. Who decides the colors? Why is Cure purple? Shouldn't Sero be purple? Rod is going to channel Max Pax and Hero for his ace match. There's always a chance. Last season had better graphics. Could be. But last season didn't have Basilisk and this season does. Which makes this season a whole lot better. <laughs> This map is underratedly broken for Zerg with the rich gas. But Cure picked it. Unless they have changed the format. But in the qualifiers, guys, it was best of one, random seeding. Or not best of one, but it's best of two, random seeding. And it's like, bam, this is your starting map. Completely random. And then, suddenly, uh, the loser picks for map two. I don't know if the rules have changed. I can ask the players afterwards. But in the qualifiers, this would have been loser pick. Eh. So Legoland saying that this is a broken map for Zork. Well, Cure seems to disagree with you, mate. It's not Roddy that's disagreeing, it's Cure. Hmm. I mean, based upon that game one, Cure does seem to be rather fond of uh, bringing it to the ultra late game. And I think Neo Humanity is a pretty excellent map for that. Like, we have seen quite a few games on Neo Humanity where Terrans have 5, 6, 7 base, 5 sensor towers, a million missile turrets, Zelnaga watchtowers, and they just sit there. Who knows TVC better though, Cure or Legoland? I mean, how many months did Cure sub to the Ruddy stream? I think zero. Legoland just did 12. So I'm favoring Legoland here in this one, but, you know, maybe Cure can surprise us. The beautiful thing about uh, Starcraft 2 is, guys, that we don't really know everything in absolutes. So, so may maybe Cure is onto something, but I doubt it. Does this Bastards team have a headquarters for training? Yes, it is in Zuidland, the Netherlands. It's beautiful. Wikipedia has 40% win rate for Terran in TVZ. 
I, I never really trust those stats, guys. Because to me, I feel like these stats, unless I know that... Like, imagine a world where I ran 500 big Bahrain bouts. Then I think I would care about the map percentage of which race wins X amount of games. But, like, Serral beating uh, Cuckoo on Neo Humanity and then increasing the Zerg win percentage, like, why the fuck does that matter? And I know people say, like, yeah, but in the end, like, it goes both ways and the numbers are somewhat reliable. I don't know, I just... It's not a, a metric that I care about at all. Like, if I, I care about, like, for instance, Cero his win record on this map, or Rainer his win record on this map, or Dark, uh, but then only when they play against Maru, Clem, Bunny, Cure, and... Uh, Baby Marine, you know? What are you trying to say about Cuckoo? What I'm trying to say is that as good as Cuckoo is, he is not quite on Saro's level and that's okay. Maybe one day he will. I believe in our Romanian hotshot, but... It's just, uh, I don't know, Cuckoo or uh, Goblin, do you agree with me? Like, I've never cared about like the win percentage over a, a big lump of games and we have no freaking idea which games have been used in the first place. How often Basilisk meets? We meet every day on Discord. If you meet, how often did we all meet in the same place at once? We actually never did. Uh, a lot of us were in Katowice. So, like, obviously Basilisk management was there, I was there, the, uh, Rainer and Sarah were there, but unfortunately Trigger was not there. And then they met up with Trigger at, for instance, DreamHack Masters Atlanta. And Saro was there, but then Reyna wasn't there, and Roddy wasn't there. We've never all been together in the same place, but I'm sure that that's just a matter of time. We talk to Sarah every day. Every day. Uh, when I wake up, I send him a text message. I'm like, hey, boo, how are you doing? And when I go to bed, I'm like, all right, Joe and I had a long and exhausting day. Good night, matey. See you tomorrow. XOXO. And he does the same to me. Like, it's pretty wholesome. If I have nothing to do, I hit him up with the, hey, how are you? Everybody loves that. What did you have for dinner, Saro? How's the weather in Finland? You know, just, just small chat. Making sure that the team spirit is strong. Six minute hive, guys. Am I seeing that correctly? There's no freaking way I'm seeing that correctly. Please tell me that this is a meme. Did the man just fire up a pre-six minute hive? Yeah, when I go to bed, Sarah's waking up. So he says good morning, I say good night. Just to make sure that we have that daily contact. That is very important to Yona and it's very important to me. That's just how we do things over at Basilisk. Then in the afternoon I have lunch with Rainer every single day. And while we have lunch together, we FaceTime Trigger, because that's when Trigger is waking up. We're like, hey Trigger, good morning. And he's like, hey guys, what's up? So, oh, we're popping off over here. You talk to Rainer and Sarah more now than you're on the same team? No. To, on a more serious note, I would say the answer to that is no. Uh, I feel like Yona is always kind of on, his, on himself, and if he ever wants to talk, he knows that the door is always open. And of course, we have some, you know, communication about, for instance, the WTL, and I will wish him good luck if there is some other big match happening. But I'm not randomly messaging Sarah like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? And stuff. And with Rainer, I've always had very good contact. So whether Rainer is on uh, Team Liquid, Clash, or Basilisk, Rainer is a good buddy of mine. We hang out, we meet up in real life as well, because he lives close to me, so... I would say not a whole lot has changed. But it's obviously very fun to be on the same team. And yeah, cheer, cheer more, be more invested in the games. I'm not talking too much about how this game is going, guys, because this is just a screaming macro. Okay, that's seven dropper lords. Now, that is not something I necessarily expected. Is, is Sarah about to go full nerd show on us? What is this? Seven drop lords with speed and a whole bunch of lurkers? Which lurker upgrades do we have? That's the only one, right? Seismic Spines? I don't think we have adaptive talents yet. This is an insane build. Obviously, this is probably not something that Cure is expecting. Sarah's done, I think, a good job in sort of trying to hide this. 
as he's tracking control of the Zell Naga Watchtower as well with a single Roach, making it very difficult for Cure to take control of the Zell Naga Watchtower. Cure does not know. Oh my goodness, what is this build? Guys, this is terrifying. This is pretty terrifying. And if you're out of position as a Terran player against seven freaking Lurkers sieging up in your natural, you're never running into that. So Cure finds one Lurker, one stray Lurker in the center of the map. He's gonna drop a Missile Turret, but that is a day late and a dollar short. A crap ton of Lurkers are about to burrow in his natural. Cyril's pulling out all the stops, but Cure's all over it. And at least he gets on top of the first one immediately, but the rest I think that's gonna be hard. We've got some Queens in the mix as well, but Queens need Creep to transfuse. And I don't think we had any Creep yet coming out of the Overlords. So far, I wanna see the fight, show the fight in the main, who cares about these Banshees? Why am I looking at a tiny picture in picture? The fight in the main is a million times more uh, important. And plenty of lurkers are still going strong. And that is amazing for Saro, guys. Gets on top of the starport. That means no liberators either for a little while. I cannot believe we were just looking at a freaking lib uh, banshee in the center of the map. And you've got nine lurkers flying into the main base. But this one is working out. The Zurich invasion is here. And I think it's here to stay. A couple of tanks getting a few shots off, but the entire main base is in shambles. Don't know if the roaches can really take that fight. I do not recommend the roaches to take that fight. I think I should move my... Since they use a lot of picture-in-picture -picture for this, I should move my camera a little bit. Guys. This is how we're gonna do it. I'm sorry I didn't do that before. I hope this is acceptable. Roaches and Hydras get running into that triangle. They get one of the two tanks. That was a bit of a painful fight for Saril. Actually, it was very painful. And Cure still has. Actually, a decent amount of work is left. Pretty insane crisis management by Cure. Maybe Saril got a tiny bit over eager there in the third base. I'm surprised that in the end, guys, Cure with those tanks was able to clean all of that up. Yeah. Couple of lurkers morphing on creep, mate. This is actually very scary right now, guys. Where I thought that Cure was in all sorts of trouble against all the lurkers in his main base. Uh, Cyril donated a lot of units into the triangle, into the natural. Only got one of the two tanks. And suddenly it feels that Cyril could potentially be in a tiny bit of trouble. But if there is anybody who knows how to face some adversity and still get out successfully, I want to say it is the great Jonas Atala. All these roaches will fall. The only question is how many SCVs are I going to take along with them? Three? <laughs> Dude, I could have picked up that Marauder. Every Marauder counts. Whoa, Sarah with a move command in the center of the map. The wheels are coming off a little bit, guys. This game went from not sure to, oh my god, this looks amazing, to I think we're in trouble. Is he shaking his head? Okay, Saro's a warrior. He can shake his head all he wants. He will never give up early. <laughs> Hydra <laughs> sniping a medevac there. That's obviously good. A little bit of momentum. Scan goes down on the right side. One of the lurkers of Saro got picked off there, but obviously Saro at least has control of that center base, so he's got gas income for days. He can have a lot of lurkers. Wouldn't hate a power bomb there. Now that's because Saro was a lot more committed this game, Dapal. Saro was a whole lot more committed. Saro Cidic Bomb! No, yes, okay, but very good split there by uh, Cure. Another Parasitic Bomb goes down. These video gamers are so good, eh? I'm traumatized, guys, by Parasitic Bomb because I always see it kill every single Phoenix, but... Pros? They've got it relatively easy. Like, it's kind of like how Sarah split off that one middle list once upon a time. I gotta say, on my new PC, I got a lot better at it. Did Saro have S rank? I don't know what that means. It was 94, yes. That I do know. Yeah, <laughs> Cure snipes the dropper lord, but the lurk has managed to hop out. Couple of lurkers now running into the triangle. Could be a lot of that SCVs here. It's three at first. It's four. It's kind of it. Obviously, it's a lot of lurkers to randomly lose. 
Zero, I think, is going to try to save them, guys. They can eye keep an eye on the minimap. The army is coming. We've got a double lurker drop in the main base or natural, whatever Zero decides to do. Zero has destroyed a lot of production facilities, but will end up losing all these lurkers. At the same time, though, Zero feels that he can get on top of every single tank here at the Rich Vespian, guys. He gets on top of a couple. Will be able to land an abduct as well. Uh, it's, it's bloody. It's messy. I feel like both of them are just losing a lot. Obviously, it is very important for Cure to always have a scan available and don't misjudge how many Lurkers are burrowed somewhere. Because one bad move against the Lurkers and it can be all over. And Sarah splitting up a couple of links, gets on top of that tank as well, gets the Sensor Tower. Cure feels that he can dive on these Lurkers. It's honestly not going all that hot. But in the end, it is good enough for Cure and he manages to clean it up. Sick game between these two. Plus three bio is close to finishing up, guys, and that's obviously problematic. I, I still feel like it's kind of close. Lynx would be very good here, and obviously Lynx will be good. Can the Hydras maybe snipe a couple of the Metavax? That would be absolutely fantastic. That was a great fight for Cero. I think up to that point, this game was honestly on the knife's edge, but the Lynx, guys, when all else fails, we can always go back to Lynx. Now the floodgates are open. Here come the Bane Lynx. Say goodbye to your SCVs. 17 of them in total. And GG, just like that, it is our man, the great Jonas Otala, who puts Basilisk in the driver's seat here in our opening match of WTL Code S, as we take the 3-1 lead over Abydos. And now it all comes down to a PvP. I'm excited, I'm hyped, I have to pee, I'm here back, I can't handle it. <laughs> See you guys soon. Okay, my stream died. The other link now has a 27 minute countdown. That cannot be right. Hmm. Never mind. It's back, sort of. Yes, it is back. It's back. Panic. Panic. It's okay. We are good. You also need a Terran ambassador, it's like Hero Marine, and you have a perfect team. No one is bigger than Gabe. As I said before, I think it would be cool, don't get me wrong. But I, I don't like the word need. I don't think we need it. Would it be awesome? Sure. Would I welcome it? Absolutely. Do we need it? No. What is this, by the way? 66? What the hell? Man, these guys are brutal. Tough crowd. Hard to uh, impress the guys from uh, WTL, eh? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's lagging again. Please stop. 64 against 66. Wait, so who's who? SOS is purple, right? Strategy maxed out. Trigger deserves more offense, by the way. He's very good offensively. What was my rating? <laughs> I don't know if I have a rating. That would be fun. That actually... I think it is worth just to send Roddy out once to see what they rate me. What am I? Like 27? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I going to get 27 and I'm going to have like a tiny dot in the center of my uh, <laughs> octagon? Like <laughs> 19 max? Fuck you, Goblin. Probably like 40-ish. I don't know, I think lower, man. If Cure is a 76 or whatever it was, and Trigger is a 64, Roddy is a 12, man. <laughs> oh, I, I, we will find out, guys. Make no mistake. I will play. It's a hexagon, Roddy. It's an octagon. I watched a lot of UFC, okay? I know what an octagon looks like. That right there is an octagon. And no one is going to tell me otherwise. You can play against Starlight Twinkle. I can play against everyone. I want to play against the Shopify Rebellion, man. I want to go up against uh, Lambo. In the bottom right side, guys, we looked at the main base of our Canadian boy that was Trigger. In the top left side, we're looking at the main base of Abydos Gaming SOS. The not one, but two-time world champion of StarCraft 2. SOS is an absolute legend. 
Oh, he got older, by the way. <laughs> Been a little while since I've seen SOS. You can see that SOS is no longer 17. I legit couldn't tell if Roddy was trolling there. My entire life is, is a troll, Marina. Roddy is always trolling. I'm gonna open a pack of Pokemon cards for good luck, guys. That's what I'm gonna do. If we get an EX or better out of this pack, Trigger is gonna bring it home. Hello, Marine Lord. And I will speed run the pack. What do you like in the UFC? My favorite fighter right now is Hamzat. Call me a casual. Freaking Roddy. If Marino is in the chat, the energy I get is black. It's fire! Because Marino is fire! Alright, I will just show you guys the last three cards. Because the rest is not that important. I want to focus on my PvP. Who's my favorite boxer? I'm actually hyped for that. Isn't it upcoming weekend, mate? Or is it two weeks from now that uh, Ryan Garcia and uh, Gervonto Davis, or whatever his name is, are they fighting? That is a boxing fight that I will absolutely tune in for. Uh, but besides those guys, obviously I like Canelo, like everyone. Uh, I like Triple G. Uh, Tyson Fury is amazing. Wait, why is SOS unhappy? Or is he just nervous? SOS seemed unhappy about something. Jake Paul is not a boxer. Uh oh. I said EX are better. It's not EX are better. He mined a mineral? <laughs> yeah, but I don't think we can be too unhappy if somebody steals five minerals of us. It's okay. The Canadian power of trigger goes beyond Pokemon cards. Have you ever kissed a viewer? Absolutely. Many of them made, and a whole lot more. I kiss you guys every day. Mwah. I give you guys hugs, I give you guys kisses. Everyone has been kissed by me. Uh, anyone that has ever tuned into this stream has been kissed by me. I end every stream with, uh, thank you guys for watching. Good night. <laughs> you have a pro, I, I guess I could, but... <laughs> no, uh, that's not totally correct, Mr. Wingen. That's funny, but not totally correct. <laughs> you never stay till the end. But I give you guys hugs. You guys know that I'm always grateful to all of you tuning in. But I mean, for instance, my uh, current woman obviously watches my stream a lot. And I guess she's also a viewer. She's a fan of Rainer. She's a fan of uh, Skillers. Ooh, keep the adepts out. I don't like this. Why did we let the adepts go in? I mean, it's a lot of stalkers, but we're still probably going to end up losing three probes here. It is three probes, right? Yeah. Don't know how I feel about that. The trigger is already falling seven workers behind. And SOS is doing SOS things, going for a very, very early Dark Shrine. No, I have to keep a close eye on the production tab and see if I can understand that. If Trigger does not find this Dark Shrine on the right side of the map, this can obviously be a very short and one-sided affair. I mean, I feel like if you see this many adapts, the alarm bells need to go off a little bit. Because people don't randomly make this many adapts if they want to go into Blink Stalkers. That's not really a thing. And I think the spidey senses are tingling. Trigger does drop the Robo. And I want to say I think it is barely in time. How did Reyna lose? It was honestly not a... Oh, the four stalkers of our men from Canada. Find the pylon, find the dark shrine. You know, guys, funny story. I once upon a time lost the game when I had no robo. And I found the pylon and I found the dark shrine. And then I killed the pylon and I was like, ah, oh, now I'm safe. And suddenly he warped in 3DTs and I'm like, oh my god, where did they come from? And it took me like 15 seconds to understand that the dark shrine doesn't need to be powered for him to warp in DTs. <laughs> now, fortunately, guys, Trigger is a whole lot smarter than Roddy, so I'm pretty certain he knows he still needs to respect the Dark Shrine, and he's cranking out an Observer. Great scout, though. But it doesn't need to be powered at all. <laughs> That's the thing. That's the point of my story. 
The Dark Shrine can be unpowered for the entirety of the game, but you can warp in DTs forever. Oh, it built? I, yeah, yeah, no, but that's what I thought as well. Obviously, like, once it's being warped in, it will continue building. Like, you don't need a pylon to continue the Dark Shrine for finishing up, so... Yes, it will absolutely continue building. But yeah, okay, I'm glad that I'm not the only one who could have fell for that. Yeah, well, it was a long time ago, but I'll never forget it. Because it was one of these proper WTF moments where I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, of course. All is obviously. <laughs> and for me, it was the exact same as what just happened in this game. I found the pylon. I found the dark shrine. I killed the pylon, but I couldn't kill the dark shrine. It was like, ah, it's okay. I stopped it from finishing up and it's unpowered or something. I don't know what I was thinking, but obviously it doesn't make any sense. Huh. Is there a reason to not just finish off the Dark Shrine? The reason was that I think Dark Shrines have a lot of HP, so that would honestly keep his units there for quite some time. And obviously we know where SOS's army is and we knew what SOS was working with. Trigger didn't necessarily know that. Uh, so I think he was worried keeping units around there for that long. And on top of that, it's not that bad to let it finish up if you know that it's there and you can get ready with observers. Yes, uh, Caldris. This Dark Shrine is a perfectly fine uh, functioning Dark Shrine, guys. It's the same Dark Shrine as it would have been in the main base right now. Close game. Obviously, with the format of this WTL regular season, guys, all that we need to do here is win one game. If Trigger wins this PvP on Neo Humanity, we've brought it home, baby, and it is all over. We'll play the final game, but it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, actually. I guess regular season map score, everything matters. But it matters more than it did in the qualifier. But the most important thing of every clan war is just get to four points as quickly as possible. As long as we always get four points, we'll always win. Yeah, okay. Neldress, that is true. Right now, you cannot research a Shadow Sprite. That is correct, guys. If SOS wants to get Blink on his DTs, he needs to power it again. That is correct. One DT did sneak into the natural as Trigger is out and about on the map with a lot of his stalkers. He's worried about his immortal army. But his DT is actually finding a lot of damage. Four probes is good. It could even be five. And it's a lot of lost mining time. And I think the Observer... Okay, it's still keeping track of the Dark Templar. Whew. Does SOS even have Blink, by the way, guys? As well as even get blink. I know DJ Chris Pratt. That's why I said get to four points as quickly as possible. So with that, I obviously mean do it without needing an ace match. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. The production tab tripped me up there again, guys. But yeah. Okay, SOS is working on blink. This is honestly a pretty terrifying army. SOS has a 16 army supply lead. And he's got four Immortals. Now, if Trigger is able to get Zealots on top of these Immortals, I'm not worried. I wouldn't hate a Trigger Blink on top of that War Prism. Uh, but now it's too late. Now that Prism is very well protected. I don't think we can really do that anymore. We need to be careful that we don't lose our Observers. I like that battery, though. Trigger is losing a couple of probes. How bad is it? So far, it's not all that bad. I like that Force Field. I think I like that positional Blink. But we obviously need to get away right now because there are still two Immortals doing their thing. Still a close fight. Still a close fight. It's not looking all that hot. SOS is sitting on a decent amount of money. And Trigger could be in a tiny bit of a pickle here. Uh, I feel like at the very beginning of that fight, there was a potential snipe on that prison that would have been sick for us. Couple Zealots now coming in from the left, but SOS is doing a very good job in leaving Zealots on the top left side. Near his uh, war prism. Trigger wants to get the immortals, but it's great micro on the side of SOS. He's showing us, guys, that you don't need to be a youngster to have a great performance here. That's honestly very clean micro on the side of SOS. Trigger is gonna send it. This is our Hell Mary play when it comes to the defense. We need a fantastic purification Nova, but unfortunately, the disrupted dies before the purification Nova goes off. And that means that I am afraid it is all over here. As SOS goes with the forward blink, finds a few more stalkers. And Abidos will get a point on the board. 
And that obviously sets us up for a very exciting final best of one PvP. Will it go into an ace match or will we be able to still win? In this game, I'm afraid it is all over. We do land a sweet Nova in the end, get a double kill on the Immortals, but it is a day late and a dollar short. A GG gets called. Cannot believe this nerd, by the way, is playing in WTL on a barcode. Can we give him, like, a penalty point for that? What the hell? Did you guys see that? He's literally barcoding. I mean, sure, he had the SOS as a clan tag, but come on. If it comes to game seven, who do you think they are putting against you? I think they would send out Cure. Cure has probably been watching a lot of Cuckoo VODs, and he saw Cuckoo actually win one out of the last 11 games against Roddy with a 3 rex, so... I think Abydos knows that their best chance is to 3 rex Roddy. Hi bro, you mentioned some time ago that Stargate kind of counters Robo in PvP. How to take advantage of it once I recognize that my opponent went for 2-gate Robo versus my Stargate. Did you guys hear that? What was that sound? Did you guys hear that? I felt like I had a Windows sound. Is that like a uh, message somewhere or... Do I need to be worried? Could it be that my hard drive is running out of space because I've been recording too much? I'll take a look. Where do I see this? This PC? No. I have 300 gigabytes free. That's not too much to be honest. That was weird. Well, I'm gonna ignore it for now. I think we're good. Yeah, there's a chance it came from the stream. Um, so basically, made to answer your question quickly about PvP strategy, the best way to take advantage of that is to just go double Oracle and build a lot of probes yourself. So you go double Oracle and you follow it up with Blink. Because the reason why Stargate is good against Robo, if they go 2-gate Robo expand or 2-gate fast expand Robo, they, the Stalkers will not have Blink forever, and they obviously don't have Phoenixes, right, to deal with your Oracles. So basically, you just keep flying around, keep circling with your Oracles, and 100% at a certain moment, will you be able to find them out of position? Your Oracles will be able to get a couple of probes, and you just take it from there. Then you keep the Oracles alive, drop a Stasis, drop a Revelation, and you'll be fine. So I hope that, uh, that helped you a little bit. Two oracles are a nightmare to deal with for any Protoss if they don't have Blink Stalkers or Phoenix. No matter how good you are. You can be SOS, Creator, Trigger, Showtime, Max Packs. Dealing with two oracles if you don't have Blink or Phoenix is very difficult. What reds? <laughs> so the strategy, the red thing is SOS. Green is Trigger and Grey is what they have in common. Top left side, guys. Can he bring it home for us? I believe. Basilisk. Trigger from Canada. Bottom right side. The man who took the 1-0 lead after a solid PvP on Neo Humanity. The two-time world champion SOS. What is this hexagon? It's an octagon. So it's an octagon with three colors. Gray is what they have in common. Purple is where SOS shines. And green is where Trigger shines. It would be exciting, Cuckoo. You can say, I am excited for 3-3, three, three, or 3-3 three, three is going to be exciting. It's an octagon, guys. You guys don't watch enough UFC, man. You guys don't even know what an octagon looks like. I am excited. Things are exciting. See that, Cuckoo? Not only do I teach you a thing or two about StarCraft, I am also helping you with English after you skipped a few too many classes. You missed the first game. How did SOS win? SOS opened up with a bunch of adapts and a proxy Dark Shrine, but it wasn't necessarily the Dark Shrine that made him win. Uh, eventually... It just kind of came down to unit movement, armies duking it out with one another, 
and he went for a strong immortal archon zealot stalker push while well, trigger was making his way up to disruptors but didn't quite have it yet and did just lose a few probes here and there two adapts in the beginning of the game to one dt randomly walking into the natural so it was honestly very close they were working kind of with the same units but SOS had a few more immortals and he was able to get the job done in the end as was actually back he's back for now and he's representing abydos so obviously guys if trigger wins this map it is all over and Bastardus gets the first w four to two in the opening play day of wtl code s if SOS wins this game it will go to an ace match then the teams will come together and they will select an ace player Some kids will get an F in school for taking Ruddy too seriously. I mean, I am a little bit shocked about the state of our education if you guys don't even know what an octagon looks like. That does, that does worry me for the future. As Whitney Houston once upon a time said, the children are our future. Guys, Trigger is foregating. Oh my goodness. Trigger is straight up foregating. Out of the Goblin playbook. One gate, no fast expand. As the West is a depth gets in done. That is bad, guys. That is bad, Niels Bear. Because he sees every single gateway at this point. And what SOS needs to do right now is just build battery, 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 sentry, void ray, battery, sentry, void ray, battery, sentry, void ray. And he will be absolutely cooking. This could even become a five gate, right? I don't really understand why Trigger is playing this the way he is. Like, why do we want slow warp-ins on the other side of the map? What is the point, guys? Yeah, I'm confused, Goblin. Are you confused, too? His pylon was probably late. This honestly looks really bad, guys. But the beauty of PvP is that even when sometimes things look really bad, you can randomly win. So good luck, have fun. looking dicey I, I don't know okay that was nice that was actually very nice but unfortunately no real damage on the void ray as well as not max packs there is only one max packs here we go big moment can we one shot yes can we one shot again yes can we one shot three times in a row the answer is absolutely yes I kind of think we should have gone for it there just run through don't go for the pylon going for batteries I don't hate okay we go for one of the three batteries we go for a void ray we don't get it we don't get it. We well, have one more shot. Nice force will there by SOS. That is very well timed. We have an overcharged battery that is barely good enough to keep that Void Ray alive. Are you joking? I still think there is a chance, guys. Cannons are going up, but I think the Stalkers can go for it one more time. They get a kill on the cannon. They get a kill on the Void Ray. They get a kill on the second cannon. He's actually doing it. The Mad Lad, I think, is actually doing it. I don't understand how this worked. Okay, we're not there yet, but we're almost there. We're almost there. This should not have worked, but it is working. The beauty of PvP. Let's go. First W is ours, guys. First W is ours. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, let's go, matey. Let's go. Well done. All right, that is uh, basically now a perfect start for us in this WTL season. We win without it going to an ace match. Raynor 1-1 with Nightmare, Serral 2-0 against Cure, and Trigger 1-1 with SOS. And that means that the first series for us in WTL Code S is a wrap. We get the job done, a 4-2 victory. And we can now start getting ready for next week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the agenda. Can we get an interview with the team if WTL doesn't hold them? Dennis! Yeah, I should have planned that, actually. But yeah, that's not a bad idea, mate. If you like it, I like it. Sarah says, that's what we like to see. That's right, Jonah. That is what we like to see. Now, yeah, awesome. Little bit of PvP magic. Alright, guys. So that is it for us in round one. We'll be back next week. It's not same time same place what is the 28th is that a thirst what is that what the hell is the 28th guys it's a friday okay Ooh, then we got an awesome friday because that is actually a friday that can also do a big rain bounce honestly cheese is triggers highest chance of winning that's a very silly statement to make i do not agree with that at all 
You make it seem that SOS is this macro god and is like always gonna get the best of trigger in the late game. If that is really how you judge Zero, or excuse me, how you judge trigger and SOS, you couldn't be further from the truth. So no, that is incorrect. But it's okay. You're allowed to be incorrect in this channel. Ooh. So next week you have DKZ versus Abydos. And it will be Psystorm Gaming versus Basilisk, guys. Wow, at 4 p.m. That's going to be a sick Friday for me, man. I'm going to go live. I'm going to play a couple games. I'm going to cast Basilisk and then do a big brain bounce. Oh. GG uh, Trigger. Well done, matey. Well done.